Hello and welcome to the HIVRNATestGuide.com YouTube channel, your trusted source for confidential HIV testing with access to over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. For more information or if you are looking for HIV testing, check the link in the description below or the bio section of our channel. In today's video, we're talking about a new and emotional chapter in HIV vaccine research, one that has given scientists, doctors, and millions of families around the world a new reason to believe in hope. For decades, the world has been searching, studying, and praying for a breakthrough that could change the future of HIV forever. And while the journey has not been easy and the progress has often been slow, something has shifted. Recent studies have shown signs of real progress, the kind that could reshape how we think about HIV prevention. And today, we're going to talk about what this means, not just in scientific terms, but in human terms. What it means for people living with HIV, what it means for those newly diagnosed, and what it means for families, partners, friends, communities, and caregivers who have walked this path together, sometimes in silence, sometimes in pain, but always with courage. This video isn't about hype. It's about hope that is grounded in science. So let's take this step together. Let's understand what these new findings mean and where the road ahead may lead. Today, we're diving into the incredible story of CRISPR gene editing and the quest to cure HIV. The big question on everyone's mind is, you know, are we on the verge of a cure by 2026 or is that finish line still way off in the distance? Okay, so let's get light into it. Why is HIV so unbelievably hard to cure? I mean, for decades now, antiretroviral therapy, or ART, has been a miracle. It's turned HIV from a death sentence into something manageable. But it's not a cure. And that's because this virus has this brilliant and frankly frustrating survival strategy that's kept it one step ahead of us. And this, this is the heart of the whole problem. HIV is a master of disguise. It doesn't just hang out in the bloodstream. No, it's way smarter than that. It literally weaves itself right into our DNA, creating these hidden reservoirs. Think of them like sleeper agents. They're dormant, totally invisible to our immune system, and the drugs just can't touch them. So if someone stops their medication, these hidden viruses wake up and the infection comes roaring back. But here's where the story takes a fascinating turn. There's this new technology, originally discovered in bacteria, of all places, that's giving scientists a totally new angle of attack. We're not talking about just suppressing the virus anymore. We're talking about going after its hiding places directly. And that tool is CRISPR. Honestly, the best way to think about it is like a pair of molecular scissors, or maybe a biological search and destroy mission. Scientists can program it to hunt for the exact genetic sequence of HIV. It then scans through all of our DNA, finds where the virus is hiding, and snip. It makes a precise cut, either disabling the virus or cutting it right out of our own cells for good. So with this incredible tool, we've got two main strategies. Strategy one is excision. It's the most direct approach. Just go in and surgically snip the viral DNA right out of the infected cells. Boom, gone. The second strategy, resistance, is more like building a permanent genetic shield. We can use CRISPR to edit a person's own immune cells, basically locking the door that HIV uses to get in. This makes their cells permanently resistant to any future infection. And listen, this isn't just science fiction playing out in a lab. The pace here has been absolutely breathtaking. After they proved the concept worked in mice back in 2019, things moved incredibly fast. By 2023, everything was in place for the first ever human trials, which led to this huge, pivotal moment in July of 2024. And that brings us to the main event, the EBT-101 trial. This was a landmark study, the first time this type of CRISPR therapy was given to people living with HIV. I mean, you can just imagine the stakes here. It was a true high-risk, high-reward moment in medicine. Now, the trial itself was pretty small, really carefully designed. It only involved six participants, and the main goal wasn't even to find a cure just yet. It was to answer an even more basic and more important question. Was it safe? And the answer, incredibly, was a resounding yes. Zero serious adverse events were reported. You have to understand, in the world of gene therapy, just clearing this safety hurdle is a monumental first victory. It's a huge deal. 
Okay, so it's safe, that's fantastic, but the billion dollar question remains, right? Did it actually work? To find out, some of the patients were taken off their daily HIV meds to see if the CRISPR therapy could actually keep the virus down on its own. Now, for most of the participants, the virus did eventually come back. But in one person, something truly remarkable happened. Their viral load stayed suppressed for nearly 16 weeks, that's almost four months, without any medication. Now, it wasn't a cure, but wow, that was a powerful, powerful sign that this therapy was having a real biological effect. But that amazing result also kicked open a critical new question. If CRISPR is designed to get rid of the virus, why did it rebound at all? This sent researchers scrambling to figure out what was going on at a genetic level. And this table here really shows you why CRISPR is such a potential game changer. Look at the other strategies, shock and kill, CAR T cells. They all kind of dance around the problem, relying on the immune system to do the heavy lifting. But CRISPR, look at that bottom row. It's the only one that goes directly for the integrated provirus. It attacks the absolute root cause of why HIV sticks around. So what gives? If CRISPR is targeting the very root of the problem, why did the virus come back? I think the natural assumption for everyone was, well, the virus must have mutated and figured out a way to escape the CRISPR scissors. But when they actually analyzed it, the answer was something else entirely. It turns out the virus that came roaring back wasn't some new CRISPR-proof super virus. No, it was an old strain that was already resistant to the antiretroviral drugs the patients were on before the trial even started. So get this, the rebound wasn't a failure of CRISPR. It was a sign that the background drug therapy hadn't wiped out all the drug-resistant variants. Now that's a huge insight, but it definitely doesn't mean it's smooth sealing from here. Scientists still face these enormous challenges. First, delivery. How in the world do you get the CRISPR machinery to every single hidden reservoir cell, everywhere in the body? Then you've got to make absolutely sure those genetic scissors are only cutting the HIV DNA and nothing else. And finally, you have to design a tool that can work against all the different strains of HIV out there in the world. But okay, let's just imagine for a second that the scientists solve all of it. They perfect the delivery, they make it 100% safe, and they create a universal tool. The moment that happens, the scientific quest ends, and a new, equally massive challenge comes right into focus. And that question shifts from can we do it to a much tougher one. Who's going to be able to get it? And if we look at the history of these groundbreaking one-time gene therapies, we get a pretty sobering sneak peek at the answer. Take Cascovy. It's the very first CRISPR-based therapy ever approved for sickle cell disease. It's a one-time treatment, a cure, and its list price is $2.2 million. And this isn't a one-off. Hemgenix, a gene therapy for hemophilia, costs $3.5 million per treatment. These prices are setting a clear and frankly terrifying precedent, putting these cures far, far beyond the reach of most people on the planet. And that leaves us with this final, really profound thought. The scientific journey to cure HIV, whether it happens in 2026 or later, is one of the greatest stories in modern medicine. But if that story ends with a multi-million dollar price tag, a price that's only available for the wealthy, we really have to ask ourselves, is the quest truly over? What does it really mean to cure a global pandemic? 